The Twelve Layers of DNA, Cryon Book Twelve, Chapter Seven, DNA Group One, Layers One, Two, Three, by Cryon. DNA Group One, the grounding layers. The grounding layers are layers one, two, and three. These refer to the closest energies to your dimensionality, and the easiest for you to understand. As we progress, the layers become more multi-dimensional and harder to comprehend. So the grounding is all about creating a foundation for the house of understanding. As we discuss and build your understanding from the ground up, the grounding layers are therefore the foundation. The numerological implications are here too for the one, two, three, add up to six. Which is the higher self layer energy, as you will see. Layer one, the biological layer. There is no most important DNA layer, but this one is the closest one to you, and the messenger for all the others. It is the only one that resides firmly in your three D world. Yet, it is as multi-dimensional as any of the others. Yet. This is the one you can see. Three billion chemical parts work together to create a reality that simply cannot be put into a logical linear box. And those who peer at the chemistry in 3D will always have a puzzle. For this layer is the one that reacts to the other multi-dimensional layers. The puzzle for you reading this book is this. If the multi-dimensional layer resides in the 90% area of this 3D DNA chemistry, then are they part of layer one or not? Are they a part or are they not? Again, you are now linearizing the issue, and it can't be solved this way. So the answer is that they are all together all the time in the soup. Remember? So at this very early juncture in the teaching, you just have to understand the energies around them and not try to figure out where they are. When you listen to a radio broadcast, do you have to know where it's being broadcasted from? In fact, that answer is that it is coming from your radio, but is being broadcasted from another place, a radio tower somewhere or a studio somewhere. That still doesn't answer the question about where is the radio broadcast originated from. What if it's a simulcast of any announcers from many different areas? So where is it coming from now? The tower, the studio, each location, the speaker in the radio. The true answer is you don't care. You just enjoy the program. This teaching is like that. Don't dwell on the linear puzzle, or you just won't understand what we are trying to give you. Relax and enjoy the program. DNA is, therefore, the engine and the map. Within the example I had my partner give you, it is reactive and creative. It pushes and it pulls, and like the other multi-dimensional energies in the universe, it is aware and biased. To help you find the creator inside, it is the antenna of your body orchestration, and takes that which is multi-dimensional and converts it into information, then action. It is never alone, but it needs the system around it to allow it to work. Alone, it does nothing, but with the rest of its entourage, it is whole. In 3D, it is seen as the human genome, all of the parts of the double helix that make up the DNA molecule. Science sees it as complete and also as a giant puzzle, for they look at it with their own bias, never fully ready to see what it might really mean. The transmitter and receiver of all that is about you. Including all of your past akashic lives, your remembrances, spiritual learning of the past, 
even your potential Lemurian roots. Layer 1 is the layer that facilitates the communication with all the other layers. This confluence of synchronicity is the great unknown and unrecognized attribute of DNA itself, which all thinks together and works together as one. Science hasn't even seen this yet, but knows it must exist. It creates the bridge of a sentient, aware force within the body. It silently waits for signals from both human consciousness and its own multidimensional memory. Together, they orchestrate the changes that are possible, which are directed by human intent. 3% of it is the engine of biology, and the rest is the antenna of the multidimensional soup that directs the engine into action. It is this multidimensional soup that is the energy that the masters touch to create miracles in the human body, for the miraculous touch only gave instructions to the DNA to change the 3D chemistry, something that any human can now do alone. Such is the power of this layer, the only one that can be examined and looked at from your 3D lens. Kita S. Shayim is the Hebrew name of God selected for it. I identified its name to my partner in 2003. My meaning for this Hebrew name of God is the tree of life. It represents the DNA chemical structure tree and the building block of all life on earth. But a human is the only entity of divinity that can change its structure through its own will. Animals have DNA too, and their akash is represented also within the DNA, but for different reasons than for the human. Even vegetables have it, but their purpose is to interface with the other life forms in a system that supports humanity. The only reason the vegetable evolved to the level it did, humans love puzzles. Why does the onion DNA have more genes than a human being? What does this tell you? Perhaps the argument about genetic complexity being related to the number of genes in DNA is not accurate. Indeed, this should tell you that something more is involved in why the human being is seen as the top of the evolutionary ladder but with fewer genes than an onion. Could it be that something else was added to make the human genes far more complex than any others on the planet? So then it's not about how many, but about a quantum energy within them? More about that later as we study the layers. Notice that each layer of DNA is an ancient name of God. Why would this be? Because the absolute truth, dear one, is that you are a piece of the Creator, not creation, but the source energy of God. This means that I know you, and you know me. It means that you always have been and always will be. This is the hardest thing for a human to understand, and the reality of it is truly hidden in the 3D hologram you are all in. If it were actually known or seen, then it would take the test out of the Earth's purpose to eventually create the beginning vibration of a new universe. Therefore, it's about the celebration of who you are as my spiritual family. We have chosen to give you this layer as number one. In the quantum states, no number is alone. For the one speaks to you right away, saying, I'm a number, and numbers are designed to be with numbers. After all, no one created a system of numbers with only one number. Therefore, a single number, you might say, is incomplete without another number to make it whole. Is it too esoteric for you? What do you expect from Kryon? So the one sits here, missing the rest of the numbers. But it also knows that in the circle it sits within, it represents the first of a linear chain. 
It also knows that the last of the chain, the nine, is next to it in the circle. It also realizes that as the one, it is the center of everything, the beginning, the first number to have substance, leading to the other ones with a more complex makeup. All this is to say that the number one is almost like the center number. In a digital domain, it represents on, where without it there would be only off or nothing at all. So it is more than just the first item. It is the center item, and therefore responsible for all the others in the chain, since they're all derivatives of it, based on it, and multiplications of it. You have established the meaning of the new beginnings for the one. However, when you think of the energy of this 3D strand of DNA, it represents the center of all DNA and, therefore, the key to communication. So don't let the significance of this being the first layer be diminished. It is not just that something has to start, far from it. For this layer is the core, the kingpin, for all of them to work. Remember also that there is no such thing as a beginning in a quantum state, since there is no timeline. Let's examine the complexity even more for a moment. For within the 3D chemistry hides a phenomenon that is not present in any other part of the human body. This double helix contains factors that we don't discuss much, but that all play into it being one of the most profound ones. When you use intent, this layer sees your conscious thought and gives instructions to the protein-encoded portions, the 3% engine that control your genes. When you give intent to wake up your Akashic experiences, this is the layer that must weigh the dynamics of a huge multidimensional storage system, your Akashic record against the attributes of the 3D regular chemistry within the human body. The most amazing thing about the double helix is the confluence of knowing all at once for more than 100 trillion other molecules of DNA. If you could see the inner workings of this body energy, it would not make sense. How can 100 trillion items all be informed at the same time? There is no chemical that races between the molecules, giving them the same message. There is no electric synapse that races around the body touching each of them with a spark of data. The answer is within the mystery of DNA, within the spirals and twists of themselves, for each of the 100 trillion molecules has its own magnetic field. It's tiny, but the properties of a magnetics are there, and each one has a field that overlaps the next one. The twists are a product of these magnetics, and the symmetry is quite revealing if you start looking at DNA with a magnetic pattern in your mind. That, of course, will eventually be discovered. Those who study electronic pathways and attributes all know the mysterious ways of magnetic fields. In physics, magnetics is seen as a multidimensional energy. It is. This should give you a clue what is taking place, for here is the magnetic messenger of DNA, the engine of communication between DNA and all cellular structure. There is so much here that has not been discovered or even discussed. Through a process called induction, all the DNA changes together. If you had a microscopic, multidimensional measuring device that could somehow measure what the DNA was doing, you would be amazed at the synchronization of it. For DNA in the big toe is just as informed as the DNA in the brain. All 100 trillion molecules work together, since they all have the same exact knowing. DNA magnetic fields overlap, they overlap 
since the physical DNA doesn't just sit there, all pristine like a bunch of letters ready to be observed in a roll. The double helix is the form of DNA, but only seen that way when it's unraveled under a microscope. Native DNA that is, the way it lives, is in a clumps with other DNA. This ensures that the magnetic fields overlap, they intertwine themselves all over the body, and this is the way DNA exists in a cellular structure. There has been speculation over the years by the doctors and scientists that the human body must somehow have a second brain. This is because of the things that science sees happen to the body. A spinner cord is severed, yet the signals somehow keep being sent to the heart and the organs to keep functioning. DNA is the unsuspected answer, for you might say that this is confluence of DNA synchronizing is, indeed, the missing pathway of the body communication that is not acknowledged by science. Magnetic induction is transmission of signals without wires when one magnetic field overlaps another. Your body is a giant transformer filled with the wireless information transmissions via the pathway of DNA confluence. When you have more than 100 trillion molecules all knowing the same thing in tandem with another, something else happens. It helps in the creation of the human macabre. Not the entire creation of it, but the part that represents the human spirit. Other parts are made from the guide set you carry with you for life. The macabre is still another Hebrew word that means to ride. Your entire being rides on your macabre and extends out past your actual body size for approximately 8 meters. Recognized as the ascension vehicle by many, the macabre is like your spiritual footprint on the planet and, indeed, carries within it all the attributes of your Akashic record. How do you think that information sets onto the macabre? Through the DNA. Later, we will show you that your entire personal Earth human history is carried in one molecule of DNA. So this physical double helix has many attributes that hide from science. First, it's mainly made of, of chemistry that is random, and that is the multidimensional map that talks to the protein encoded parts of the DNA. This is more than 90% of the genome, and often considered junk. But the very size and proportion of who is doing the work is very revealing for the chemistry of the codes, gene-producing parts of the DNA are simply slaves to the 90% that are doing the talking. Second, DNA is the master synchronizer of the human body, not the brain. Third, the DNA family of more than 100 trillion parts creates a singularity. It has awareness of what you are doing and your spiritual intent. It often follows karma, for that is the spiritual blueprint that sets up the genes. Of course, you knew that. Let me ask you a question. With that many working parts, what would happen if that aware and listening system had no direction? The answer is anything it wants. Without your conscious direction given to your body often, your cellular structure, DNA, has no boss, no instructions other than those you were born with. Now you know why we ask you to talk to the cells, for the great listener is the DNA. This is how consciousness can heal, can change chemistry, and can create more immune cells just through intent. Science has shown this is possible. And how perhaps it all starts to come together for you? You must be the boss to your body, and the DNA has a process whereby it is ready to listen to you. Summary Layer 1 is the double helix and represents the chemistry you can see. This is the bridge layer, the one that contains the 3D parts and the multidimensional parts. It receives and transmits 
for the job of later one's energy is to take information from the multidimensional layers and then implement it upon your gene structure. Therefore, you might say that it really is central to how everything else works. Om, thank you for listening. If you'd like to listen to more excerpts from the books of Crying, you can subscribe, like, and comment below. And if you like, you can donate to the channel to support our work with the information down below. Thank you and uh, hope to see you in our next video. Om. Um.